Hey everyone, this time we read Jacked by David Kushner. So this book is a really interesting one, and David does a really good job of kind of recreating conversations that were probably had between Rockstar's employees and also other people in the video game industry. If you read his other book, Masters of Doom, and if you've also read uh, Console Wars by Blake Harris, this is in that kind of style where you don't get the exact conversations, you get ones that David kind of recreated or copied from email exchanges. It works out pretty well, but I think I should tell you that if you read this and it kind of comes across as there's actual dialogue in this, that's not really the case. So the big thing that I saw in this book is how David kind of compares and contrasts two people in it, uh, Sam Hauser from Rockstar Games, and Jack Thompson, who's kind of a moral panic person, is probably the best way I can put it. Uh, he was a lawyer at one point. I think he might still be one. He disputed that he was disbarred from at least the Florida or the courts. Uh, I'm not really too sure exactly how that worked. I just kind of want to cover all my bases. What the book basically boils down to is you have Sam Hauser, who I guess he's sort of at least being portrayed as like a free speech absolutionist where he thinks everything should be fair game in video games. And Jack Thompson, who seems to just come across as, as like a psychopath at best and just someone who, you know, morals only matter as long as they're my morals. But my morals don't apply to me, they only apply to other people. That was kind of the way I, what I got from him. It, it was just a very weird reading about both of these people. I do want to say one thing that, that Jack Thompson does here. Um, he uses his son to buy a copy of Vice City. So he sends his son into the store with some, into a Best Buy with some money to buy Vice City. And this is probably the most disgusting thing that I have ever seen because he's videotaping his son buying a video game from Best Buy to say, look, they'll sell this to, they'll sell anything to minors, they don't care. That's not Rockstar's fault, that would have been Best Buy's fault. Also, it just really disturbed me that he's using his son, who was, I think, 10 or 12 at the time, to push his own agenda forward. He, I mean, if that wasn't bad enough, and that was probably the worst thing that he did, he then goes on to just make up baseless claims about video games that have not been released, so he's just kind of assuming what's going on. It was like when he called Bully a uh, Columbine simulator, and he just started, you know, trying to push the... For every single uh, mass shooting or shooting, he immediately pushed that these were all related to video games, the kids played video games, and that's how they learned to kill. It was just... Just reading it, I was like, this doesn't make any sense. <laughs> it's nothing that he was pushing had ever actually been proven. Even today, none of it's been proven. It's I, I really can't stress how much I dislike Jack Thompson, especially after reading this. Uh, I don't like the people that were running Rockstar at the time either. I really don't like Jack Thompson in this. That's why I was really struggling to find somebody that I actually was sympathetic towards, and unfortunately it was a lobbyist. I know I went off on Jack Thompson, which deserve, he deserves it. Uh, Sam Hauser isn't any better in this book. Uh, he... I, it comes across that he just wanted to be able to do whatever he wanted, and then was confused that he was getting backlash or anything like that. And it didn't help that Rockstar never came out and defended itself, they just let the lobbyists do it. And that's kind of what the, the lobbyist, Mr. Lowenstein, says at the very end of this. He's like, you guys just released your game and then you, like, ducked for cover and let me deal with all of the shit. And he didn't think that was fair, which is true. He, that wasn't fair. Rockstar should have came out and done more to defend their games or explain why Jack Thompson was wrong. But they just didn't until really the hot coffee incident. And then they just came out and started lying left and right which was just as confusing and like throwing the modding community under the bus. It's it's a very weird thing. I can't, I, I keep saying this, but I didn't think anybody was really good in this, except for Mr. Lowenstein, who again, 
it's weird that I think a lobbyist is the most sympathetic person in this. Uh, then you also have the modders as well, who are also fairly sympathetic, because they were just doing what they always did, and they were doing what the game was allowing them to do. And then Rockstar turns around and throws them under the bus, and they said, oh, they created the hot coffee mod, not the ignoring the fact that it was in the coding of the game, but not really present in the game. You couldn't unlock it in the normal game. So David does talk about some of the other games that Rockstar made, like The Warriors, um, Red Dead Revolver, and then Red Dead Redemption, and Bully as well. I like that he talks about those just because it's not just one series that Rockstar made. They're known for a few other games. But GTA is obviously the focus, because that was the one that they first kind of came out with. They pushed the most boundaries with that one. And it is the most notable out of their games, to be perfectly honest. And I don't really associate Rockstar with games like The Warriors or State of Emergency. I always associated them with GTA, and also a little bit with Bully and with Red Dead Redemption. One thing I did get from this, it kind of felt like the courts were fed up with uh, Jack Thompson by the time Bully came out, especially since the game got a teen rating and for, again, Jack Thompson thought it was a Columbine simulator because he just saw them making a game based in the school, so he immediately assumed they were training people to shoot up their schools without ever actually seeing the game at all. Throughout the book, you also have a lot of people leaving Rockstar because they're kind of disillusioned with what's going on, they don't really like Sam Hauser's uh, management style. They don't really agree with a lot of things that Sam Hauser wanted in the games. And honestly, I can see what they were going for, like having sex in the game, having nudity in it, uh, having a lot of violence. I could buy those in the game if they work with the story. But in some cases, it just felt like he wanted them in there to have them in there, just to say, hey, look, I did this first, or something along those lines. And I'm not sure if this is true or not, but it always seemed like Sam was just shocked that somebody would be disgruntled while working there and want to leave and move on to something else. People were bringing their problems to Sam and to the other people that were in management, and they just kept on getting ignored. At least that's the way it's presented in this book. I don't know if that's actually true or not. But Sam always just kind of came across as like surprised or shocked that this person would want to leave or that, you know, giving them some more swag from, you know, Rockstar or like a new t-shirt or a new, uh, new like bomber jacket with Rockstar and bit, like on the back. Like he was kind of shocked that that wasn't keeping people there for whatever reason. So I really enjoyed this book. Even though I still think Masters of Doom was a better book by uh, David, this one is really good in its own right. So definitely pick this up if you are a fan of Rockstar or if you are a fan of just video games in general. So anyway guys, that's gonna wrap it up. I hope you enjoyed today's episode. Uh, please let me know what you think in the comments below and have a great day everyone.